You know, I bet if you ask most sports junkies what they really loved about their favorite sport, it would be the chaos and the spectacle more so than the sport itself. I know as a boxing fan, I want to see someone get knocked out. I don't want to sit and watch a boring 12-round Marcus of Queensbury style fight. I want to see someone get dragged. Uh, people that goes to hockey matches will go to see the fights. People that goes to NASCAR will go to see the wrecks. People that goes to the rodeo will go to see some poor guy just get dragged by a bull. No one actually wants to see got the guy make it eight seconds. It's just human nature that we slow down to look at a train wreck. Um, that's just how we are. And me, as a political junkie, I got to be honest with you, I really enjoy when someone just gets absolutely dragged politically and verbally. Uh, especially when it's a reporter that gets dragged fairly. I don't like to see someone like Trump uh, just belittle and gang up and call them names. I like when someone just brings the truth and uh, just drags them with that. And that's what we see here in this next clip. When Jake Tapper asked his Nancy Pelosi to comment on some comments that Donald Trump made, Pelosi's comeback is better than anything at the rodeo. Take a look hear from uh, progressive voters, Democratic voters who say, as I hear from them on social media, um, Dem the, the media made such a big deal out of Joe Biden's uh, alleged cognitive problems. Why don't they talk about Donald Trump's cognitive problems? Well, Donald Trump talked about that just a second ago, and I want to get your reaction. Let's run that clip. They laugh at us all over the world. They're laughing at us. And you know what they're really laughing at? Kamala, because they can't believe that she's going to be president. They can't believe. You talk about cognitive problems. She's got bigger cognitive problems than he has, in my opinion. Donald Trump saying that Kamala Harris has bigger cognitive problems than Joe Biden. Why would you even cover that? This is a person who's not on the level. He is their nominee for president. He is incompetent. Let's not even talk about the silliness of it all and the weirdness of it all, and the assault on women that it is, we're not going to talk issues, incompetent. Okay, I got to jump in just for a minute because I love how she right out of the gate said, why did you even bring that up? Why did you cover that? Why did you play that? Why do you want me to react to that? That man's incompetent. You know, that man is weird. That man is stupid. He's not on the level. I love how she just butted in immediately and cut it down to size, but it gets better. So let's keep rolling. The only thing he did as president, the only thing he did as president when he had the majority was to pass a bill that gave 83, a tax cut that gave 83 of the benefits to the top 1%, adding $2 trillion to the national debt. The worst job creation record of anybody president since Herbert Hoover. Because of COVID, yes. Well, it's not because of COVID. We put $3 trillion into the into the economy mm -hmm. when he was present working with the, uh, and, and the Congress are working together. We put $3 trillion into the economy. So uh, don't blame it on, when, and what did he do with COVID? Denial and delay. Responsible for thousands and thousands of people dying. Mm -hmm. So if you're gonna uh, forgive his job record right. because of COVID, Make sure you attribute many of those deaths to him as well. Not, not forgiving uh, anything, <laughs> just noting, just noting yeah, the context. Incompetent. Let, you know, forget well, you, silly and crazy and crooked and all the rest. Incompetent. Let me yeah, poor old Jake Tapper was like the dude that can't make it eight seconds on the bull or can't make it one minute with Mike Tyson. That was absolutely epic. And I love how she just absolutely brought the truth. Uh, and I think we need to do more of that and have more of that going into this election. We have been here on the channel and us in the pro-democracy movement have been calling it out, and bringing the receipts for a long time. But I'm glad to see when someone gets a chance to do that on a mainstream station, because I don't feel like they do it enough. You know, we have got a guy who is a failed former president, and I feel like that's how he should be addressed. It shouldn't be President Trump. It should be we're here with the former president president. I think they should always put that in there because that's what he is. Uh, he was voted out. 81 million people was tired of his shit. They fired him like Kamala said during the debate. And so I think people needs to point that out that, Hey, this guy is back asking for a rematch. If you want to talk about why ain't Kamala fixed our problems, she's been in there. Why ain't she fixed it? Well, he was president for four years and he didn't fix anything. The only thing that he did, like she said, was uh, give tax uh, cuts to his rich buddies. He uh, got Roe versus Wade overturned, but he added $2 trillion to the debt, had the worst job creation. People needs to point that out. 
uh, he can sit there in his little fake fantasy land. And if anyone, I mean, he wants to call everyone else fake news. Donald Trump lives in an absolute fantasy world where while he was president from, from 2017 through 2020, oh, America was just wonderful. It was great. And it, it was never great before. But he made it great, and he did more for people. He even did more for black people than Lincoln, he goes on to say. And then now, since he's been gone, we're right back. We're a third world country. We're going to hell. This country's in decline. We're, a, we're an embarrassment. And then if he can get reelected, he says it will be great again. And the thing about his supporters is they would honestly believe it was great again the day that he was reelected. He wouldn't even have to take office for them to go, oh, it's great again. We're wonderful now. Because they absolutely live in a fairy tale world. And I've known people in my lifetime uh, that have lived in those kind of fairy tale worlds. And I've always been fascinated by people whose brains function that way. But uh, growing up, I knew a couple of people who just would lock into this fantasy world and they would tell stories that we all knew weren't true. And they were stories that we could easily prove to not be true. Um, and sometimes they would try to include, I'm sure you've had this happen to you, they'll try to include you in the lie. And when you say, no, I don't ever remember that happening. Oh, well, you might've been too little to remember that, but yeah, that happened. I've seen that so much. And I've always been fascinated by how people's brains could work like that because my mind always goes to, well, at some point they have to go around mirrors. You know, there's an old Lefty Frizzell song, old country song called, I never go around mirrors. Me and my band used to play it all the time. The punchline is he don't want to go around mirrors because he don't want to see a grown man cry. His heart's broke. Well, my thought is if you're in Donald Trump's cult, there has to come the point while you're brushing your teeth or washing your hands that you look in the mirror and you have to say to yourself, it wasn't as great as he lets on. It wasn't this wonderful world. You have to look around and see what was happening during COVID and see how bad he bungled it. Yeah, they all chose their side and got on it, but you got to look at what was really happening. You got to wake up to the reality and you know, who were these people? Who, who were MAGA before 2016? What were they? They didn't have an identity. They didn't have a personality. This guy gave them one. And therefore, they could just sit here and live in this fantasy world where they think those four years, everything was great. We're back to a third world country now. But if he gets reelected, oh, it'll be great again. And they'll all go back to bed. And that's the scary part to me is that they would all just go back to bed and completely ignore the things that were happening. And if he began to do everything that he said he was going to do along on the campaign trail, well, they ain't going, you think they're going to pump the brakes? You think they're honestly going to stop and say, no, we don't want to see military tribunals. No, they're going to cheer it on because they're, they're living vicariously through him. He is their guy. They're like the people that goes to a sporting event and watches the, the fighter fight for them and watches the, the team. How many times do you hear people say, we did it. We won the Super Bowl. We're going to the state championship. I've always said, I didn't do nothing. I sat back and uh, eat chicken wings and drank beer and watched the Super Bowl. I didn't do a damn thing. I don't get caught up in that. And I'm, I'm a boxing fan. I love to watch boxing. Not so much these days as I used to. I think it's kind of uh, went to hell, honestly. I'm not a fan of the Jake Paul era of boxing, if you want to call it that. But still, you know, I, I, I may be a fan of boxing, but I don't get caught up in it in that fanatical sense that I live and go, oh, we are going to do this. We're going to knock him out. No, I mean, I don't live in that kind of a fantasy world, but they do. And they have shown us for exactly who they are. And all this talk about Joe Biden's cognitive decline for the last four years, it's been so tiresome hearing people sit and go on and on about that. When everyone, they all have someone in their family who stutters. They probably stutter themselves. Um, honestly, one of the reasons why I don't talk as much about it on here, and I could drag Donald Trump for days with all of his misspeaks, but one of the reasons why that I don't hound him as hard on those things is because I make misspeaks every day in every video uh, I realized later that I said something wrong, mispronounced the name, called somebody with the wrong name. Uh, my mom, we, we joke a little bit about her because in our family, she will kind of, uh, go down the list, um, saying everyone's name. Like, you know, she'll, she'll look at us and she's meaning to say one name, but she'll say three names before she gets your name right. Um, I feel like that there's way more we can drag Donald Trump for without even bringing that up. But the fact that he's out there, now saying that she has more cognitive problems than Biden, that's just straight up misogynistic, folks. It's just straight up sexist. There's no other way uh, to put it. Um, he's trying to talk down and belittle her. And he's turned up the, the temperature so much since the debate, since he got his ass handed to him, since he got dragged, 
Uh, that's another one that I enjoyed going to. That's another spectacle I enjoyed watching. Uh, that I would have rather watched, and I would rather watch them debate again right now if the rodeo and the rodeo does come around where I'm at quite often. But uh, if the rodeo was down the street and there was a debate on a rematch between Trump and uh, Kamala, I'm staying home to watch her drag him because he couldn't last eight seconds. I doubt he's ever lasted eight seconds at anything, if I'm being honest with you. But um, it's good to see someone uh, like uh, Nancy, who I know Trump can't stand and who I know is a big villain in MAGA. It's good to see them just bring the truth and just drag somebody. I ain't really got nothing against Jake Tapper, but he kind of set himself up for that one. And uh, again, with my boxing analogies, it's like when you go back and watch the replay and you go, whoa, he really set himself up to get knocked out. He did because he played something so ridiculous by such an incompetent moron that she had every right to call it for exactly what it was. And uh, I love when I see those kind of clips. I am a political junkie, and that's the kind of stuff I, I really look forward to when I'm scrolling through, looking to see what happened, reading and studying the news. There's a lot of depressing stories out there. There's a lot of scary stories, not trying to be hyperbolic. Uh, it, it can get really heavy at times. But there's nothing better than when you sit back and watch someone get dragged and just have a good gut laugh. So thanks to Nancy Pelosi for that. But uh, also, I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in here every day on the channel and uh, supporting what it is that I do. Uh, thank you guys so much for hitting the subscribe button. If you haven't already, be sure to go ahead and, uh, and hit that. That way you're notified whenever uh, I release uh, videos. I was looking at my analytics the other day, and uh, there's 50 51% of the people that watches my videos on a daily basis still haven't hit that button. A lot of people says, what's it even mean, Brando? Well, it just simply means you're subscribed. And uh, when you go to your YouTube account and click on your little notification bell, uh, you'll see that I've posted something and you won't miss it. Uh, also, uh, be sure to check out our members only content here on the channel. Uh, see if you like that. And if you, if you like that, go over to Patreon. I have it linked in the uh, description of this video. Uh, we're pumping out more exclusive content over there and I'm going to be doing more music over there. So, um, again, I thank you guys so much for your support. Hope everyone has a great day and, uh, thank you guys for supporting what it is that I do.